You are now tuned in to Power Podcasts, the Empower Hour. Peace and blessings, beautiful souls. I am Brandy L. Bates, author of Moonshine for the Soul, The Art of Grind, and many other books. I'll be your host for tonight. You can find me on Twitter at Soledad Francis and on Instagram at Brandy is winning. Most of these podcasts can be found archived on YouTube. Hashtag Power Podcasts, but please listen to them while they still have all of their spirit and vitality by subscribing to us on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and or BrandyBates.Potomatic. First off, I just want to say thank you for fucking with me, though. We are officially charting on Apple Podcasts. So to each and every soul who streams these podcasts, I just want to say sincerely thank you and squeeze you with so much love and appreciation. Thank you. Uh, To assume... A brace or crash position is an instruction that can be given to prepare for a crash, such as on an aircraft, the instruction to brace for impact, brace for impact, brace, brace is often given if the Aircraft must make an emergency landing on land or water, right? What do you do when you plan and strategize and try to do the right thing and things still fall apart in the palms of your hands? What do you do? There's a sacred energy guiding you that's why that's why for some of us lately uh, we've been distancing ourselves you've been distancing yourself from who and what no longer serves you and who or what lowers your energy your vibration your mood your vibe instead You've now begun attracting and manifesting who and what does serve you. What does elevate you. What does nourish you and inspire you to vibrate higher daily. This is about letting go and letting God. This is about voluntary surrender in the face of duress. In the face of drama, in the face of collapse, in the face of nervous breakdown, in the face of depression. This is about getting to the nitty gritty, the heart of the matter, the choices our most essential, our most vital part. You pilot your emotions most of the time. Don't let your emotions control you unless need be, right? Create your non-negotiables. What are your non-negotiables? Each and every each and every one of us should have a list of this is your no-go and everything on that list if someone says it or does it it's a no-go you have to have a level of of standard uh, a, a baseline of what you will allow certain shit just doesn't happen in my reality it just doesn't if it, it can come close but Certain things I'm just not going to allow to happen the way my life is set up. You have to always be reminded 
You must remember to remember to remember that you, you are the most important person in your world. And you have every right to decide what you will and will not allow into your life. You cannot pour from an empty cup. Producers with drained batteries are highly unproductive. Especially like if you're in a leadership position, if you're in a leadership position or you are the head of household or uh, a lot of people are depending on you. You are the you are the decision maker. A lot of people depending on you, jobs depending on you, mouths to feed depending on you. Regeneration cycles are not a luxury. They are a necessity. Because if you fall apart if you cave in everyone else is affected other lives are affected and so we need you edified and uplifted and propped up at all times we need you fed we need you watered you need you fed and you need you watered you have to be able to recharge your batteries so you can show up on your Mario and Luigi about those coins. Install zero device days, right? Install zero device days often. So you get away from technology and your usual life to enter the state of flow where your mastery grade ideas reside. That's the beauty of meditation. The beauty of meditation is you can't bring Twitter with you into med- into meditation. You can't bring Snapchat with you when you tap in to the inner mind. You can't bring in your group chat in the middle of yoga and deep breathing, right? No one receives world-changing insights while playing with their phone. The deep work has to be done in solitude, in silence, in peace, in quiet. You need time to cultivate your mastery, to create the vision, to allow it to simmer and slow cook so all the flavor and the spices and the juices come together without distraction. Exhausted people never become game changers. Exhausted people never become game changers. Non-stop working, non-stop stress on top of stress and racks and racks and racks of stress and social media checking leaves no room for new ideas to incubate. Do you follow me? In endless, endless email checking and notification checking and responding and, and reblogging and, and commenting and like leaves no room for novel experiences to reform your imagination. We got to get back to getting in nature and in solitude and peace. Be still. We got to get back to that. The last thing a man or woman with a temper needs is to be under the same roof with someone without a filter. Sometimes it's about picking your battles and other times it's about knowing when to defend yourself and prepare for battle. Battle that involves the least amount of bloodshed. You have to be ready for anything. You have to be ready for everything. You have to be ready for any and everything. What does your instinct tell you? If you practice listening to and acting on your instinct and you know that still quiet voice inside, it is always 100% correct. If you start doubting it, second guessing it, you you, you begin to muddy the waters and be wrong 50% of the time. And so learn to use and listen to and act 
upon your intuition until you get it right. Until you move seamlessly with the intuitive mind. We forget that we're all living on different levels. We're all living on different levels. What do they say? There are levels to this. You assume, it's easy to assume that everyone else um, is residing in this world with a similar mindset as yours. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. Maybe a handful of people share your mindset and your ideas on many things. But no one out there shares all of your insights and ideas and mindset and frame of mind the way you do on all the issues that you do all the time. And that is a, that's a good thing. But prepare for impact. Prepare for impact. Brace for impact. You are the space that your storyteller is happening in. When you truly tap into the self, like truly tap in, go deep, go deep. You're no longer just yourself, right? You become like an army. You become a movement. What do they say? When it's just when it's just one person believing in something, it's like you're crazy. You're a psycho, right? You're a psychopath. You're insane. When it's two people, mm, it, 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 it. It might be a call, right? When it's three people, it, it, it might it might it might be gaining some traction. But when it's four or more, now it's a movement. And just like writing your goals down in your own handwriting has a powerful effect on your subconscious mind. That's why I always talk about the importance of writing out the beauty of journaling, the beauty of um, writing out your your goals, writing out your future, writing out your vows to yourself, writing out your values, writing out your mission statement for your life, right? Because you extend your dreams from thought world into the physical reality. And this is about, this is about reverse engineering and deconstruction. See, we've learned from people a lot of time, a lot of the time, we've learned from people who did things wrong and not so much that they did it wrong on purpose more so people who did things based on their own understanding and their vibrational frequency and their indoctrination their level of indoctrination their level of education and their level of intellect for that time so for some of you your parents are baby boomers for some of you your parents may have grown up in the uh in the era of 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 vast a vastly different world right but their ideas are implanted in you um their their ideas about god their ideas about finances their ideas about life love right the behavior of those we surround ourselves with primes the way we will operate in the world Research confirms, in fact, that if a student lives with someone who studies seriously, right? PhD parents, mom's always reading, everyone's a nerd, they adopt the same behavior. Like, you can't be telling your kid, do your homework, do your homework, and they never seen you read a book. Hello? They've never seen you crack open a book. And you telling them that they need to get on their job, on their homework. People who spend time with others who gossip. All they do is watch tragic news. Consume toxic TV. Trash in, garbage in, garbage out. Garbage in, garbage out. Begin to behave similarly. If that's what you're around, that's what you start doing. Just sit up and watch the news. Just sit up and watch misery. After misery, after misery, after tragedy, after tragedy, right? Lethal ideas. Some of you were born with spiritual immune systems that sooner or later, sooner or later, 
give rejection to the illusory worldview. It's not what you look at that matters. It's what you see. We can both be looking at uh, a crack house and I might see a cathedral because I'm looking at the value of the land and I'm looking at the potential equity once it's gutted and fixed up and revamped. And you may just see, you know what? This is, an, it's an eyesore. This is the result of urban sprawl. This is the, the result of gentrification. Of the, you know, we all have, we're seeing a diff, we're seeing the same thing, but we're seeing different perspective is coloring what we see. This is about vision. This is about being fluent in reading between the lines and speaking in possibility. Get fluent in speaking in possibility. Life is a delicate, beautiful, and fleeting ride. The victories come to reward us, and the pain shows up to purify us. And so given the relative safety, for instance, uh, of, of, of flight, of, of airplanes, of, of air flights, of, you know, flying coast to coast flights, what we haven't heard in some time is the phrase brace for impact. But that's where it comes from. When you hear the phrase brace for impact, prepare for impact. The brace position is loosely described as like, number one, you have to place your feet flat on the floor, flat on the floor. Number two, you tuck your arms and you tuck your elbows close to your sides. And number three, you bend forward over your thighs as tightly as possible and number four tucking your head as close as possible to to the surface you're most likely to strike when slammed forward that is the seat in front of you or the bulkhead depending on your position in the plane right but the reason for this position the reason for this position is that it's intended to deliver maximum protection as the risk of, 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 of head trauma, because head trauma is what you gotta worry about breaking your neck or your neck snacking, you know, snapping or whiplash, right? But this is about brace for impact. This is about, this is about how to tuck and roll. This is about knowing how to get lean. This is about using, um, emotional intelligence the whispers of the coming recession right is ripe in the air all this little uh chatter about the upcoming recession upcoming recession is it gonna affect housing is it gonna affect is is is, uh, is it gonna affect the tariffs or trade or foreign trade or the stock market what's gonna spark it right the coming recession no one can determine first off how mild or difficult the next recession will be, but we do know that there will be a recession. That we do know. Dynamic disequilibrium. Dynamic disequilibrium. It's built into the system, built into the economy, built into the ecosystem. Understand the pure present is like, as we know it, present present, future, past. The pure present is an ungraspable advance of the past devouring the future. And so in truth, all sensation is already memory. And to exist is to change. To change is to mature. To mature is to go on creating oneself endlessly. We live in a dominator culture and certain things are just built into the machine. Poverty, Pestilence, lower class and higher class, and underbelly, black market, etc. None of that has to ever touch you, though. None of that ever has to affect you or be a part of your reality. Our future lies in the realm of the imagination. In the future, technology will enable us to go into the imagination 
follow me, money will be made doing this. Because the transcendent experience, the transcendent experience is real. And cognitive activity is actually our salvation. It always has been, it always will be. The people who fashion tools that evolve us, the artists, right? The movies, the music, the scores, the movements that reshape our perspective and worldview. And in our consciousness, there are many negative, negative seeds, positive seeds. The practice is to just avoid watering negative seeds and to identify and water and cultivate the positive seeds every day, each week, every month, all year. That's how you that's how you cultivate a life that's you don't got to get ready cuz you already ready, right? If the voice in your head is you, who is the one listening? If the voice in your head is you, who is the one listening? Your mind must arrive at the destination before your life does. Whatever that looks like for you. If that's abundance, if that's wealth, if that's sobriety, if that's healing, but prepare for impact. Life is not just a random series of events that happen because you did it right or you did it wrong. Instead, it's, it's an intelligent unfolding that is revealing itself to you all day long, bringing you step by step from unconsciousness into a state of higher consciousness, higher consciousness. That's why, you know, theoretically, you're supposed to be learning and growing and expanding your reality. Theoretically, and when you're and when you're finally ready to heal, if the, if right, if you should choose this adventure, should you choose when you're finally ready to heal and create the biggest positive shift of your life, you'll begin to see everyone as your teacher, especially those who trigger you. When a boundary is set, and you receive like immediate pushback, whether that's in your uh, on the workplace, on the job, at home, with your family, with your siblings, with your um, whatever. When a boundary is set and you receive immediate pushback, that boundary was long overdue. That's what it's telling you. What you make of life is up to you. Life is exactly what you think. Exactly. If you think, you know what, this world, we live in a crazy world, it's, you know, it's full of crazy people, then that's the world you will experience. If you think, you know what, this world is just, it's, it's just a beautiful place, man. It's full of beauty, it's full of opportunity, it's full of love. That is what you will experience. And so trust how people make you feel. We have a GPS system built in our guts that tells us who is best for us to be with. Quantum physics tells us that nothing that is observed is unaffected by the observer. It means that everyone sees a different truth because everyone is creating what they see. Everyone is creating what they see. I've said it before. I know people who get in and out of relationships, different people, the same exact relationship. I literally know women who consistently enter into abusive relationships like that is what they it's almost like it's what they choose because they're creating that reality and they don't know they don't even know how to not create it that way energy is the currency of the universe when you pay attention to something you buy that experience Whatever you hold in your mind, that's what will tend to occur in your life. It's slow. You know, it doesn't happen 
overnight, immediately. Thank God, right? But it starts making its way. You start seeing the rumblings of it. You start, you don't, you know, you, you nothing comes upon you all at once. It's slowly, slowly, suddenly, and then before you know it, it's all over you. Stop buying into the ideas that don't resonate with the reality you prefer. Stop giving these ideas credence. Because what doesn't appreciate depreciates. Pay close attention to what you give appreciation to. Each person, like each person inhabits a microverse all their own. And that's why being nomadic can shape you. Being nomadic can upgrade you. Get out of your zip code. Get away from home. Get away from the familiar. Familiar, Familiarize yourself with the unfamiliar. Meet strangers. Understand there will come a time where there will be three versions of consciousness in the future. Three versions of consciousness. Number one, purely biological consciousness where humans, these are the people who are not augmented. They don't want none of that shit on them. They don't want any wearable technology. They don't want your Apple watches. They don't want any devices. They don't give a fuck about their heartbeat or heart rate or blood pressure. Just they don't want no parts of it. All of it is, you know, as far as they're concerned, mark of the beast, right? Then you have your bio-digital. And these are going to be the humans that have augmented their bodies with brain-machine interface systems. We're already seeing the genesis of this. And then we're going to have the digital consciousness. The digital consciousness. And let's say in 2045 or 2050... You'll be able to have brain machine operating systems the same way you have, you know, you upgrade your, 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 your Mac OS or your, your uh, Microsoft operating systems, right? In the near future, you'll be able to have these operating systems that live in your brain, so to speak. You're able to plug it in, plug in, which are able to reach into thousands of neurons in the brain, in different regions of the brain. Some of it, the same way they can give you drugs that affect certain areas of the brain. They'll be able to do this digitally. And some of them will affect the amygdala, right? Some of them will affect the cerebellum. All of them will affect what you see, your reality, meaning your consciousness, and waking reality as you know it will be manipulated on purpose by design a type of neural engineering and that includes your sense of reality just like when uh neo wakes up in the matrix if you have if you've ever seen the movie the matrix i don't know who hasn't but you know a in the movie the matrix when neo first wakes up before not you know not 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 before he's unplugged but when he wakes up it's like this simulated world this it's not a it's not a real physical world in fact he's he never had a sense of pure biological world it was all simulated reality in some type of cyber world and we're seeing again we're seeing it already uh, but it's about to go like it's beta stage right now all information in the multiverse, all information, exists as an entangled waveform. All these waves going. And it's our minds. It's our minds. Or rather, the symbol coded programs within our minds, which organize it into space, into time, into objects, into experiences and situations and circumstances and events and material objects and things and people and relationships. We are merging with the machines though. And this is so much bigger than transhumanism. Intelligence, I mean, beyond our wildest imaginations. Because we're becoming the new creators of consciousness, new forms, new plateaus, new realms.
All gifts come with a dark side though. All gifts. So whatever your gifts are, just know that there's a there's a dark side to it, right? Prepare for impact. Brace for impact. What will be your impact? Who are you impacting? Remember that there is an intelligent orchestration to the unfolding of your life. Each person shows up to teach you a lesson and every circumstance comes to offer you a gift. You know, the other day I was, you know, I was telling babe, I'm like, look, I'm so tired at this point. I feel like last season Whitney Houston, like I'm, you know, I'm just struggling not to, I'm just trying not to become a drug addict. And I'm so exhausted, right? So exhausted. But I had to remember to remember to remember that even that is a gift. Being exhausted is a gift. Every circumstance comes to offer you a gift. Stay uplifted in power and stay uplifted in love. Thank you again so much, you guys, for uh, helping this podcast to, to get recognition Uh, Go out and have a wonderful day today. Brace for impact. Prepare for impact. You're impacting somebody today. Make it beautiful. Thank you.